The Last Guardian has been one of the most interesting games in recent memory, with its release finally almost here. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at 10 things you must know about one of PlayStation 4's most anticipated exclusives. Let's get right into this. Number 1. The Last Guardian was announced a long time ago, and it's been in development since 2007, a year after the release of the PlayStation 3 under the title of Project Trico. But a common misconception regarding the game is that it was in development the whole time. That was not the case. Director Fumito Ueda spoke on this, saying the following. Quote, there were a lot of technical challenges with this project and trying to really strive for the best and aim for the goals we had in mind. It wasn't always constantly making progress at a very fast pace. There were times when there was maybe a holding pattern or elements of it were put on pause. Some things were just completely out of my control at times and that caused delays here and there. Number two, the creation of The Last Guardian was partially based on the interaction between the player and his horse in Shadow of the Colossus. As designed, Shadow of the Colossus was meant to create an emotional interaction between the player, the female character, that you want to save and the colossi you must fight to save her. Ueda was surprised and inspired to find more players feeling a stronger connection between them in that game, and he wanted to make this interaction and relation between a human and the creature more of the central concept for his next game, spawning The Last Guardian. Number 3. So what is The Last Guardian? It's a third-person action-adventure puzzle game where you play as an unarmed boy who can run, jump, climb, and perform other actions similar to the gameplay in Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. You'll also have to care for Trico, your pet bird-cat hybrid, by removing spears or arrows from it, feeding it, and healing it. Over the course of the game, you'll gain better command of Trico, but he'll still be his own animal with his own interests, needs, and wants. Oeda stated that he believes each player will have a different Trico to work with depending on how he or she chooses to interact with him. Number 4. The Last Guardian, like all Team Eco games, is very story-driven, and its story is framed as a flashback narrative told by an older man recounting his experience as a younger boy meeting a giant feathered creature resembling a griffin named Trico. In the flashback's present, the boy has been kidnapped under mysterious circumstances and taken to a large, expansive castle. Much of the game is set around the developing friendship between the boy and Trico. Number 5. Controlling Trico won't be based on the simple press of a button. Rather, he's difficult to control. You might need to take several attempts to coerce Trico into performing a specific action. He's driven by animal instincts, and it's up to the player to guide the creature taking advantage of his natural behavior to complete puzzles. For example, the player may have to have the boy jump to coerce Trico to jump across a large gap. The player may also need to find a way for Trico to sit still in order to allow you to complete a section. You'll have some idea of what Trico's mood is not only by his motions, but by the color of his eyes ranging from yellow for a cautious mood to purple representing anger and disgust. <laughs> Number 6. Elements like music are used very sparingly to highlight key emotional moments, such as when Trico uses his tail to catch the boy while he is jumping from a collapsing platform. Ueda stated that much of the architecture in the game emphasizes tall and vertical spaces as to make the player become more connected to the boy, who seems small in contrast to these spaces. The levels in The Last Guardian have been adjusted to meet the standard of Trico's size and abilities. Levels will also be scaled to accommodate puzzles that require coordination between Trico and the player.
Number 7, the engine for The Last Guardian features a full physics emulator which is different from previous Team Eco games. The engine also includes versions of the previous AI systems used in Team Eco games, but with an advanced interlocking system allowing for a more complete artificial intelligence. Ueda has also stated that the engine renders the effects of wind on each of Trico's feathers, so that should be a pretty impressive visual feat. Number 8, Yasuhida Kobayashi, Vice President of Japan Studio, stated they gave The Last Guardian an English name to appeal to the larger demographic markets in the United States and Europe for the PlayStation 3, now obviously on the PlayStation 4, hoping to avoid similar cultural problems in title and artwork that were attributed to Eco's low sales in the West. Number 9, while The Last Guardian has been in development for a long time and without a doubt saw a significant evolution through that time, Ueda stated that the final game as of June 2016 still represents the initial vision he had for the game at its inception. The transition from PS3 to PS4 only improved the game from a technical standpoint, but it didn't change how it played. He also stressed it was important during the extended development cycle to keep the question what kind of game do I want to play at the forefront, and to remember that the game needed to be targeted to players experiencing the title for the first time rather than the developers that had played through it over and over again. Finally, number 10, when will gamers get their hands on The Last Guardian? The game is set for a release on December 6th exclusively for the PlayStation 4, and at this point I think it'll hit that release date. So that wraps up 10 things you need to know about The Last Guardian. What do you think? Are you picking it up day one? Or is this one you're still a little bit skeptical on? Comment your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.